thisfaiththing.com, episode 251. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is trusting in God with all your heart. Faith is knowing that all things are possible with God, that nothing is too difficult for God to do. This faith thing can be easy when we have God on our side. Faith is the word of God. Welcome back for another episode, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Friends, last week we spoke about the proper way to do a sacrifice and what God accepts from us as a true sacrifice. We learned that sacrificing to God must come from the heart, and it must be on the will and on the accord of the individual. It should never be anything forced, and it should never be anything that you do grudgingly. God wants it to be a true and honest sacrifice with him, and more than anything, he wants your heart heart to be in it towards him. Sacrificing to God is what moves him, friends. When Abraham was told to go and sacrifice his son, Isaac, in the book of Genesis, what God was looking at, my friends, was his heart. Yes, it would have been a very difficult thing for him to do, especially having waited for this promised child for so long, for 25 years. But God was looking at his heart because God wanted to test to see if Abraham could be what he would end up becoming later on in the future. God told Abraham, take your son Isaac, take him from your land, take him to this hill where I will show you and sacrifice him unto me. And what God was taking a look at, God was definitely piercing through the heart, through his chest walls to look at his heart, to see the state of his heart. You can imagine friends, God has promised that he will give you something. And then later on, that thing that has now brought you joy, that has brought you happiness is what God is now asking you to sacrifice unto him. We can imagine each of us right now, we would feel the pain. We will feel the burden that, man, I had to wait for this long for this thing only for God to say that he wants it back. But Abraham, he was willing, friends. You can imagine the turmoil. He could not even tell his wife, Sarah, that this is what God asked me to do. I'm sure he did not disclose it with the mother because there's no mother that will just willingly say, okay, my son, follow your father. He's about to sacrifice you. But Abraham, Abraham with faith, he went up to that mountain and he presented himself a living sacrifice before God. He was ready to lay his son. He had already prepared the wood. He prepared everything. It was now time for him to lift up his hand to now sacrifice his son before the hand of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, the voice of the Lord came down and told Abraham to stop. God was looking for a sacrifice. He was not looking in this case for a burnt sacrifice like we learned last week. A burnt sacrifice where you take animals, you cut them up, you clean them up properly, you lay them down for God to be able to consume this sacrifice. That is not what God was looking at. God was looking for what or who in this particular case would be a living sacrifice unto him. He was looking for who would be willing to give themselves 100% unto God. That is the desire that God has for you and me. That is the desire that God has for each and every one of us. He wants us to be able to give ourselves to him, unto him wholeheartedly without looking back to the world. That is the desire that God wants for every child of God, for every Christian to be in accord with him, to have this fellowship with him. Friends, turn with me to the book of Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Here we see Brother Paul, who is writing to the Romans, and he says this to them. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Friends, we have Paul here speaking to the church in Rome. Well, more he is begging them. That's actually what the best word is. He's begging them that they present themselves, their bodies as a living sacrifice, a holy body, which is acceptable unto God, which ultimately is their reasonable service. Friends, when we begin to really dissect this passage here, Paul is asking them that they should do everything in their best 
options in their best accord in their best mindset to please God, to do what Jesus did for each and every one of us. Maybe not to that extent, but to do exactly that friends. You see friends, when Jesus was here on earth, he knew exactly what he came for. He knew that he came to be a sacrifice to atone for our sins, a living sacrifice. Jesus knew that he would go to that cross, that he would die on that cross, that his blood will be shed for you and me. To draw us closer to his father in heaven. Jesus is the prime example, my dear friends, of a living sacrifice. Jesus laid down his life for you and me, for us to be able to enjoy what we are enjoying today. For us to have a communication with our heavenly father. That is what Jesus did for each and every one of us. He became the ultimate sacrifice for you and me, friends. Jesus knew when he was walking this earth, when he was fulfilling his ministry, that that will ultimately be the end for him. And the reason why Jesus was able to do was because he submitted completely to the will of God. He desired to do the will of God. Even when he was praying and asking his father to take the cup away from him, he knew friends that that was not really the will of God. He knew at that moment that his flesh had taken over and he was now feeling this emotion, this pain that my goodness, I'm about to die for these people. But yet he now stopped himself and he said to his father, not my will father, but your will be done because he was desiring that ultimately, ultimately I need to do what my father in heaven wants from me to make him happy. I know that it may not be pleasing to me. I know that I'm going to feel this pain. I know that I'm not going to like it. I know that they're going to ridicule me. They are going to spit on me. They're going to beat me to nonsense. But yet, yet I am going to do what my father in heaven wants for me. That was what Jesus did for you and I, friends. God, God in this instance, in the book of Romans 12, 1 and 2, what he wants us to understand from this, friends, is for us to live unto him as a living sacrifice because his son has already done that for us. God doesn't want you to go to the cross. God doesn't want them to nail you to the cross. God doesn't want you to shed your blood for any one of us. Let's even ask the real question. How many of you are ready to die for this humanity? How many of you is ready to die on the cross Getting nails pierced through your hands, through your feet, friends. How many of you would like to get those 40 lashes? How many? Not many people will want to go to the cross for anyone. Some people are not even ready to go to the cross for their own family members, let alone the whole society, friends. But Jesus did that for us. He was a living sacrifice, the living sacrifice for all of us. The best form of worship, my dear friends, that we can render unto God after Jesus dying on the cross for us is total surrender of ourselves to him. Which is why Paul says in verse one that this is our reasonable service because Paul knew, friends, when he was writing this letter, Paul knew that, you know what, there's nothing that you and I can do to further please God, but to completely give ourselves to him. We cannot offer him money. We cannot offer him cars. We cannot offer him a house. We cannot offer him clothing. We cannot offer him jewelry because God has all of that in abundance, even way more better than what we have here on earth. So the only way that we can now please our father in heaven is by giving him our reasonable service by making sure that we live lives of living sacrifices unto God on a daily basis. That is why he says that this is our reasonable service. When we jump to the book of Romans 6 verses 12 and 13, it says to us, therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God for sin shall not have dominion over you and for you are not under law, but under grace, my dear friends. It tells us here that sin should not take over you. Don't live this life as a sinful life, friends. Don't allow the lust of your body. Don't allow the way your body feels, the things that you feel, the emotions that you have, that you get. Don't allow that to ruin your body, ruin your relationship with your father in heaven. 
That is what this passage is telling us here. It tells us that we are saved because of the sin that we commit on a daily basis by Jesus Christ dying for us. Not because of our own righteousness, friends. None of us are righteous. None of us can take ourselves to heaven. That is the reason why Jesus had to come and die on that cross to become our Christ, to take us to heaven. It is because of the righteousness of Christ Jesus that we are able to be able to move closer back, have this gap that has been formed closed so that we can move closer back to father God. It's not because of our doing. It's not because we do anything good, but because God wants us to take responsibility for our own action. It tells us, but present yourself to God as a being alive from the dead and your members as an instrument of righteousness to God. Make yourself to be holy friends, make yourself this walk, make it to be worthy God has done so much. If God doesn't do anything else again for us, which because he is God and he is so compassionate, he is so merciful, he is so good to us, he will do it every day. The fact that you are awake, the fact that your two eyeballs opened up, the fact that you're able to move around, the fact that you're able to listen to this message is because of the mercies of God. Lamentations 3 tells us that his mercies are new every morning. God did not have to wake anyone up, but because he has done that for you and me, friends, we ought to give our very best back unto Father God. Present yourself as a living sacrifice to God. It is because of his mercies, friend, that you are not consumed. It's totally because of him, not anything that we have done. Again, let's jump to Romans 8, 11 through 13. It tells us, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, To live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you will put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. Oh, my friends. Because of the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead is in you. You are able to do what God desires from you. Many people will tell you that they are not able to do this. And that is because they want to be unable to do it, friends. Because if they truly had a desire to please God in heaven, to do the will of God in heaven, to live according to the standard of God, then they will do everything in their will and their might possible to please him. They will live acceptable as his children here on earth for him. Paul is telling us in this chapter eight, friends of Romans, that we are debtors, friends. We owe him. We owe God everything inside of us. It is not enough, my dear friends, to say that you go to church. It is not enough to say that you read the Bible. You must put to death this flesh. You must every single day. That is why we are told in the holy book that we die to ourselves every day. Get your cross off that ground, pick it up and die to your flesh every single day. You must do that by yourself. Nobody is going to do it for you. Your mom cannot do it. Your father cannot do it. Your sisters cannot do it. Your brothers cannot do it. Your spouse cannot do it. Your children cannot do it for you. You have to make that decision on your own friends that I am going to be a living sacrifice that as long as I am here on earth, as long as I have breath in me because God is in heaven and he continuously breathes in me to allow me to have decisions, make decisions. I will decide to live for him. You cannot tell me that it's that hard friends. Jesus died for our sins, yet he knew no sin. Jesus never committed a sin. It is doable. I am a sinner just like everyone else. And every single day I have to make a decision that, you know what? I am going to do what God wants. Yes, my body wants to do other things. Yes, my mind takes me in other directions, other places, and gives me thoughts that I should not have. 
But every day I have to denounce those things. I have to denounce that feeling. I have to denounce that thought because I want to live for God. I desire above all else, like Brother Paul, to live for him, to do his work here on earth. The little short time that I have that he has granted me, I want to do it for him. We are debtor friends. We are not debtors and we don't owe our flesh anything. Many of you think that you are in debt to your flesh when you are in debt to God in heaven. That you are able to do as your flesh pleases. That you're not able to save yourself from sin. That is an excuse that I hear all the time. Oh, well, I'm a sinful being anyway. I'm going to commit sin. That doesn't make it right for you to just willingly commit sin, friends. That's not how this whole gospel works. This is not how the kingdom of God works. Many of you think that you can just go and do as you please, the deeds that you please. You are made up of a spirit, soul, and body. And let me tell you, friends, that the spirit is always in war with the flesh, the body. And the reason is because your soul, which is your mind, will always put the spirit and the body at war. The mind will be telling you that you need to do one thing, you need to do the opposite thing that God wants you to do. No, go here, don't do this, don't listen to God. That is what your soul, your mind is trying to do. But God does not want that. God wants you to operate as a spiritual being because, my dear friends, you are a spirit dwelling in this flesh, this dirt body. And you need to tell your mind that you are not going to follow what the flesh wants. This is why Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 26, 41, that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You need to control what your flesh does on a daily basis by telling your mind that you, the spirit being, you are the one in control of your body. You are the one that's going to tell your body where to move. You are the one that's going to tell your body when to eat. You're the one that's going to tell your body when to sleep. It's just like fasting, friends. Trust me, fasting. Ooh, fasting can take a lot out of you. And trust me, when you see other people eating in front of you or you smell food that is being prepared and it's fresh, it's just so nice to the nose and your flesh is becoming hungry. And as someone who is fasting, you need to tell your body absolutely no. We are not going to eat that food until we are ready to break our fast. You have to control your thinking, your mind. You are the one that will drag your soul in the direction where you want it to go. Because friends, this soul is going to end up in a place. This soul will end up in a place. And I hope everybody's dream and desire, just like my dream and desire for you, is that we all will make it to heaven. This is how you make yourself a living sacrifice to God, friends. Furthermore, when we go back to the book of Romans 12, verse 2, we are told exactly what we need to do to live as a sacrificial being unto God. We are told that we are not to conform to this world, that we should not feast ourselves on the things of this world, the riches, the glamour, the fame, cars, houses, women and men, that we should not conform to these things, but that by the renewing of our mind, How do you renew your mind? You read and study, you meditate, you chew, you digest, and you do it all over again. The word of God, things of God. You place yourself in God's presence all the time by the renewing of your mind, friends. You renew the way you think. You renew the way you dress. You renew the way you speak. You renew everything that concerns you. The way that God wants it to be is what you begin to do. That is when, friends, that we will be pleasing to God. And that is what is acceptable to him. My dear friends, this faith thing is not that hard. When you yield yourself to God, it is not that hard. When you desire to please him, it is not that hard. There is laughter in the kingdom of God. There is joy in the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us that in his presence is fullness of joy. It is awesome to please God. It is awesome to live as a living sacrifice. You see, a lot of people think that when they begin to live for God, they will be shortchanged on a lot of things. And no, friends, let me tell you, the moment that you begin to live for God is when all of these blessings begin to roll in and with such ease. Matthew 6, tells us that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness And all others shall be added unto you. And the reason why a lot of us are not getting this scripture proper is because we have flipped it. 
We seek everything else and then you want to seek God. No, Matthew 6, 33 tells you seek him first. Do his will first. All of his righteousness, search for him first. And when you do that, everything that you desire for your life will come to pass. It is so awesome to be in the presence of God, to live for him. And when you make yourself a living sacrifice unto him, friends, I can assure you that there's a reward. God owes no man. Friends, I hope that this message of today has blessed you. Go in peace and I will speak with you on the next one. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to This Faith Thing with Adil Aduni. Please head on over to the website at thisfaiththing.com to find the show notes and everything mentioned inside of this podcast. I pray that you have been blessed. Go in peace and I will see you in the next episode. God bless you.